So just back to our presentation, we also have um, a new resources module in SAP Business One 9.1. And this is where we have the ability to uh, manage and plan our resource capacities. We could apply this to um, capture perhaps machine, labor, and other resources um, associated with costs. We can link to um, fixed assets and employee master data. Um, and also um, the item master data relationship map contains resources too. The benefits being we have um, visibility of available capacity to avoid bottlenecks and optimize the production plan. Resource costs are included in the end product cost too. So let's just take a look at that um, in the software. So we just come back into SAP Business One. So if we come into SAP Business One, we'll just take a look at the new resources module. I'm just going to open up a resource master data. And we can see that here I've created a resource and it's for a machine. Um, we can see um, that we can run the machine for days or minutes or hours. So these are um, almost like runs. So we might run the machine for one hour before it's stopped and then we do maintenance on it, etc. We've also got the opportunity now where we buy, um, we can allocate resource costs. So I can say for this machine for each day or hour or half an hour, it costs £10 of electricity and £2 of oil. I've also got an issue method, so here this will reflect on the bill of materials and also the production order. I can set this to back flush or manual. We also have um, capacity data as well, For um, we can set our capacities by warehouses if we so wish. And I get to see uh, my initial capacity, how much I've got committed and what my availability is. So here we can see that, I, uh, that I've actually committed this machine um, to be used um, too much. Um, than what I've actually got available, so I might need to go into my production plan and I might need to be able to um, just uh, change um, some orders around, some production orders, or perhaps I want I need to um, have an operator come into the um, production um, location and actually um, work um, and and keep the machine running for, for a longer amount of time. If I come into planning data. This is where we can um, set our daily capacity factors. So we can see this machine here each day it runs for eight hours a day. Now I'm in um, the resource for the large machine at the moment. If I was to come into the next resource which is for the production team employees we can see here this is labor and what I've done under my daily capacity factors I've set in the first factor, which is two, um, so two employees each day, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, work in the production team, and they each work eight hours a day. We can see on Friday, though, I only have one of those employees working for the eight hours a day. So therefore, you can see how my daily capacity is affected for this particular resource, my production team employees. What I can do if I want to, I can click on the Employees tab and I can actually um, select um, my employees that relate to this particular resource. So um, I can say that Bob and Bill are my two employees, which I can see um, on, on my um, daily um, capacity factors. And then you've got the usual things like properties, attachments and remarks, etc. So once we've set all of our resources, we can then come to something called the resource capacity. And if I just open that up, I can select it for um, a particular period of time. So I'm just going to refresh. And we can see here, um, if we start off on the internal um, capacity type, we can see um, what our capacities are before we take into account, for example, any production orders, um, etc. If we come into committed, I can now see um, which of my machines are committed and for how long on each particular day. So I can click on each of um, on the information and I can see that this machine, this um, resource one, which is my large machine, um, is going to be committed for four hours against this particular production order, which is production order 181. And I can go into there and I can actually view that production order.
So we've got a nice, um, we've got a nice view now um, of our production plan. If I come into um, consumed, I can see um, what I've actually consumed so far, and we can see um, that so far we've only consumed two units um, for this particular um, issue for production. And I can drill into, I can get back to the production order from there if I needed to. So we can just close that and then again um, we can see what we've got available. So I can see where I've committed too many um, units um, to be used and I might want to then go into uh, the, um, the production order. So if we come into our production orders I can see here um, I can come into my production order and what I might want to do is just schedule this out, this out to, um, to another day or I might need to increase the capacity of that particular machine instead. Okay, So that's just a bit around the resource capacity. If I now come into the production and into the uh, bill of materials, let's just find um, a bill of materials, we can see here uh, we now have got um, a different type and we've got our resource type. So we can see so we can see how we can incorporate our resources into our bill of materials. So I can see this large machine here is required for four hours per um, server that I'm creating and I then also need the production team employees to work um, for one hour for each server which we create. And if I just come into a production order now um, and let's just create a production order for that particular um, server. So I'm just going to add it and I'm just going to do um, just going to do the one on this demonstration. So I'm just going to add that. And I'm just going to release this production order. And I'm actually just going to set the um, the employees not to be back flush but manual because what I want to do is I want the employees to actually say how many um, hours they actually worked on each on each server which is produced. So if I just right click now and if I just um, issue components we can see that the components to issue are actually our production team employees um, and they were scheduled to um, just spend one hour um, but we can say that they actually um, something happened and they had to um, spend two hours on this particular um, this prediction particular production order. So I'm just going to update that and just refresh my production order. And if we come into summary, we can see I've actually got a variance. Okay. Now that variance is because it's um, if we come into our components um, and if we come into resources, we can see that that variance is actually now being driven by the actual um, the actual cost of this particular um, production team. So we'll just come back into the presentation. And we'll now look at the production enhancements. Um, and in the production enhancements, we can now see that we've got a new um, line type um, for resources and text. We just had a look at the resource one. We'll have a look at the text one now. Um, bill of material UDFs can be linked to UDFs on the production order. Um, the production order runtime links to the resource master capacity planner. We just had a look at that one. Um, we also have a production order relationship map and component management. Um, we now have the option to update several bill of materials simultaneously. So let's just come back into SAP Business One. And this was the production order that we just looked at um, where we looked at our production um, uh, team resource. And we're just going to stay in this particular um, production order for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, re receipt in um, completion of the other components and resources. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to come into report completion. And I'm just going to add that. I'm just going to give it a serial number. It's fine and just add that receipt from production and I'm just going to say yes. If I just close that receipt for production and just uh, refresh this production order we can now see that all the lines have been um, have been receipted in. 
So what we can see is we've receipted all of our um, products in. Um, and if I right click on this production order and if I come down to a relationship map, we can now see what SAP have incorporated, the different documents that relate to this production order. So we have got two issue for productions. The first one, if we click on it and just open that up, we can see this was the issue for production for our production team, whereby we originally thought, well, we originally planned that they would spend one hour and instead they've spent two. If I just close that down, the next issue for production if I just double click on that, these are um, all of our components, um, but also we had our large machine um, that, were, that was back, back flushed as well. So we've got that in there. And then if I close that down and open up our receipt for production, we can see this was the receipt for, um, for our components um, to actually complete that particular server that we were creating. If I just close this down now, um, and we can see now if I click on the summary tab, we can see that the total variance is at £22 and we can trace that back because if we come um, into our um, components and if we come into um, our resources, because remember we planned one and instead we used two hours, and if I open up the resource master data for my production team employees, we can see that per hour um, it costs £22 um, and that has effectively been doubled um, to um, because we use two hours and therefore our variance um, is £22. So we were going to use £22, instead we used £44 um, as we can see on our, on our relationship map. We can see that issue for production came to £44 and £22 um, of that um, is actually a variance that we weren't expecting. If I just close that down now and if I just come into um, the bill of materials, we can see we talked earlier about having um, the new line types, so resources and also, and also text in there too. What we can do is we can move our lines around, so if I just want to maybe perhaps put, um, put the text down there first or um, I might want it to be the, f um, the first the first row it means that when we can print this out it's almost like um, almost like stages so we we can set our text to be stage one ensure you've um, you fasten this component stage two ensure that this is complete etc etc so we can do that um, what we've also got if I just come into this particular item um, on a right click I can come down to the relationship map and we can see that now the item um, actually incorporates um, all the different um, components to create that particular master data item. And if I just close this down as well, if I just come onto the um, production data tab, we can also drill into the bill of materials directly from the um, item master data. We didn't be able we weren't able to do that before and we can also see how many resource components and how many components um, make up this particular item so we've got some overview data from the item master data now as well what I'm going to do now is just show you some of the um, bill of materials component management feature and what this allows us to do is update many bombs or many bill of materials at once. Uh, before we would either have to do that manually or perhaps use the data transfer workbench, it was um, it was quite cumbersome. But SAP Business One have now given us um, this bill of materials component management feature. So you've got different tasks. So you can either change bill of material lines, add bill of material lines, or delete bill of material lines. I'm going to show you um, the change bill of material um, lines task. You can select a particular um, bill of materials to, to change or if you wanted to you've got all of these other um, variables. Instead what you can also do is say okay fine whenever um, in any of the bill of materials I find a particular item or resource so I'm going to choose this particular item. What I want to do is I want to replace that particular um, item with a different component. So I'm going to say replace those items with, um, let's choose this one here. So I'm saying every time um, I have a bill of materials at the moment, 
that has this particular item in, A0001, I want to replace it with an A0002 and I want to replace, for every one existing component, I'm going to replace it with two of, of these. So if I click OK, um, this is a preview window, so I can see all of the bit of materials it's going to update. And if I just um, open that window a little bit further, we can see the bill of material number. So these are the existing bill of materials. I can see the types. If we come over, we can see the existing components. So this is the component that I want to change. And this is the, rep the replacement component that I'm going to change this to. So that's one, that one there. And I'm going to replace um, each one of these with two of these replacement components um, and I've got the existing quantity in there. So let's take for example I think we just used the um, the S1000 um, in our previous example. So I'm just going to click OK and now I'm going to open up the bill of materials and let's just find that particular server and we can now see I've got an A0002 instead of an A0001. Um, if I come into show history, we can also see, um, if I just open up this particular instance, it was an A0001 and of course it's now an A002.